It should go pretty quickly, right? I think we're a little bit of a higher level than this, but we're just going to make sure. First, is a warning to you, okay, which I think I already gave to you, is to not look at an equation or get out of the habit of looking at an equation uh, and saying, well, that's easy. I know what x has to be. Because it's not going to be easy forever. Okay? Um, an analogy I like to use is like pretty much any sport. You can get in there and you can do the like easy parts of a sport, but let's, let, let's use the example of uh, well, disc golf because I, I love disc golf. So um, if we're trying to putt, okay, we've got a disc, we're trying to putt, and if I'm trying to putt from me to sim, okay, not very far, I can pretty much throw it any which way I want to. I can throw it like this, I can throw it like this, I can send it end over end, right? Easy. That's like an equation, x plus 9 equals 20. Easy. It's right there, I just need to get it in there. Okay, I do whatever, <coughs> all right? But there is a good form for putting. And if we don't learn it, then when we have to putt from over here, okay, if at the beginning I was starting bad habits like throwing it end over end, so it tumbles like a pancake over and over and over like that, that's not going to travel very far, right? See what I mean? Discs don't travel very far when you throw them like that, okay? And they're not very accurate, okay? So there's a certain form to learn. I don't know, I don't think I have a disc in here. Right? There's a certain form where we, we push the disc straight, right? And it's a very awkward seeming thing, but it's the most consistent, accurate, long distance approach that we can take. And that's what we're trying to do now. We're trying to learn good form, good habits, and not just saying, oh, it's easy. I know what X has to be. All right? You have to do, do the, the silly problem. little steps now so that when it comes to an equation like A simple, fairly simple equation like okay. it's going to be very difficult to just guess what x is. You can't just see it. And that's not even a very complicated equation. It's a, what we call a linear equation. And if we then step it up to a quadratic equation, it's going to be very difficult to solve by just guessing what x is. And this is a fairly simple quadratic equation with two negative solutions. But if I keep going and okay. uh, this has some solutions. They're probably, well, they're definitely going to be like some decimals. Okay. They're not going to be decimals that you're going to be able to guess, because they're actually decimals that go on forever and ever and ever and ever end and never have a repeating pattern. Right. So to solve equations like this, if, if you don't start good habits now, you're going to have to make a huge leap all at once, rather than a small step at a time where I say x plus 9 equals 20. The way we want to solve this is to think, how do I get x plus not? 9, but x plus nothing. Maybe you're already in this habit, but if you're not, if you're in the habit of saying, oh, I know that x would have to be 11, because it's so obvious, right? it's not good form. You're putting like a, like a maniac. And uh, when it comes to that long distance putt, it's not going to go in. Okay? You're going to be sweating and stressing and wishing you had paid attention on the day that I gave you the warning. So the thing we want to get here is x plus nothing. How do we get x plus nothing on the left side, Clint? Minus 9. Subtract minus 9 from both sides. You see how silly it feels to write minus 9 right, and get x plus 0? It seems ridiculous, just like it seems ridiculous to stand this close to uh, a basket, a disc golf basket, and putt like this. Right? You're right there. It's good form. It's good practice. It's a good habit to get into. So we. Subtract 9 because 9 minus 9 is 0. We're going to get nothing on this side with this x here. Subtract 9 from 20. 
x is 11 because x plus nothing is 11, so x must be 11. Okay, how about this one right here? Does anybody want to aid in? Minus 8 is 0, plus x equals negative 10. 10. So I, I, I just threw that out there, because sometimes when people see 8 plus x, they don't realize it's the same as x plus 8. Right? How about negative 4 plus x equals 7? What would we do then? You would subtract negative 4. Subtract negative 4, which would be the same as what? Adding 4. Adding four. Good, adding 4. So negative 4 plus 4? Zero. Zero. 0 plus x equals 11. So x is 11. So that's what you call a single step equation with addition and subtraction. The thing with a single step uh, or a one step equation with addition or subtraction is what you want to wind up with is x plus 0 equals you know, whatever it equals. You want plus 0. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. As an understanding. <coughs> What's that? As in, what do you mean when you say thumbs up? Just like uh, if I give you an equation where you know, add or subtract, you wind up getting x plus zero. Oh. To solve the equation. Okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Sideways. Give me a thumb. If you don't give me a thumb, you didn't uh, give me any input. You can't formulate what I do next. If you don't give me any input. Okay, let's start with number three here. Three x equals twenty-one. Again, don't just say, "Oh, seven. I know it's supposed to be seven because I know I want you to do the one little step. Okay, because you know that three times some number is twenty-one. How would you get just that? Just one of those numbers. On this page, our goal was to get x plus 0. So we started with adding something to x, but we'd really like to be adding to x is nothing, so that we just have x. Here we have something multiplied by x. Something multiplied by x. We don't want to, we don't know what, what, want to know what 3 times x is. If there were a number multiplied by x, what would we want that number to be? There is a number multiplied by x. We don't want it to be 3. What would we like that number to be so that 1? We would like it to be 1, right? Because what's 1 times x? x? x. 1 times x is x, just like x plus 0 is just x, OK? So we have 1 times x. So can I get somehow get this side to be a 1 times x instead of a 3 times x? Divide by 3. Divide by 3. Thanks, Grace. We're right there. Yeah. <laughs> Divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we have 1 times x. 21 divided by 3 is 7. 1 times x is 7, so x must be 7. I don't have to write this step, that's not what I'm saying, but this is the idea behind it. We're trying to get 1 times x. We're not just doing the opposite operation. We're trying to get 1 times x. How about number four? Now we have a two-thirds times x equals 16. Why don't you, in your notes, if you haven't already, try and crack that. How are we going to get one times x when we start with two-thirds times x? Don't shout it out. Just try it yourself. Here we are. Two-thirds x equals 16. So I'll write it nice and big for everybody. What can I do to the left side of the equation? What can I do to it so that I get one times x? Anybody do anything besides divide by two thirds? Well, I, I wasn't really like um, quite positive what to do because we're not really doing fractions. Okay. So I just kind of wrote it down and then um, 16 divided by 3, which, and then I got times 2, so it's like 2 of the thirds. So you, you divided the 16 into 3 and then multiply by 2. But you get that. But that's what you're supposed to do to x. 
If I, if I knew what x was, I would divide it by 3, multiply it by 2. Well, aren't you supposed to do reverse? But that's not reverse. You divide it by 3 and multiply it by 2. That's exactly this. It's not reverse. You see? So Molly? Would you do two-thirds times um, uh, x over 1? Two-thirds times x over 1? Yeah. And then this is not helping. Neither is that. We're working on the same thing here. And you guys talking to each other, I realize, is, is uh, an act of goodwill, but also it's distracting. We're talking about I just addressed that. I know it's an act of goodwill. You're trying to help each other out, but it is distracting. Okay. All of it? Uh, you take 16 divided by 2, and then 16 times 3. Okay. The same as Daniela doing the reverse of what's done to x. That's good. Why don't you just do the same thing because there's still numbers? The same thing as what? as you did on number three, which, well, since you did three divided by three, and then you did that both sides to yeah. the bottom top of the equation, wouldn't you just do the exact same thing? Divided by two thirds, which I realize people have, have suggested, that's correct. I mean, two thirds, they are, like you said, just numbers. Two thirds divided by two thirds is one. Right. There's just a little bit, like a little bit of a quicker way, okay? It really comes from, how do I divide by two thirds? How do I divide something by two thirds? Times two. Ellie? Could you do 16 over one? No. Do 16 over one. Yeah. Then you have to flip the reciprocal. Of what? Two thirds. So multiply by? Three thirds seconds. Three halves. So two thirds divided by two thirds is one. So that's one times x. Well, 16 over one times three over two. Yes. That's correct. If you get 16 times 3 is 48, divided by 2 is 24. Say 6 and 2 share factors of 2 and get 8 and 1. 8 times 3 is 24. The, the thing that I was being kind of cryptic about before and I was saying, is there, did anybody do anything else? We could just jump right to, why don't I multiply 2 thirds by 3 halves, which is the same as divided by 2 thirds. Don't get me wrong, that's absolutely great. Oh, just skipping that one. But just, you know, skipping the whole, how do I divide by a fraction again? If I take 2 thirds and multiply by the number 3 halves, I get 6 over 6 is 1, or 3 and 2 are canceling each other, and I get 1. And I multiply this by 3 halves. We can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that fraction, because when you multiply a fraction by its own reciprocal, you get a 1. And it's the same as dividing by the fractions. It's the same as dividing by itself. If you were to divide two thirds by two thirds, you would multiply two thirds by three halves. It's just a, a little bit more of a straight arrow to x, and you still get twenty-four. Bridger, um, for the reciprocal, can you flip either one? Because I flipped sixteen once, and I got one sixteen times two thirds, and I still got twenty-four. You shouldn't have gotten twenty-four if you did that. You get one over twenty-four if you did that. <laughs> he totally did that. The answer is no, you can't flip either one. You have to flip the denominator. And now I'm going to teach you why again. Uh, so we're going to take 16 and divide by 2 thirds. Okay. Remember that we're di dividing 16 by this fraction 2 thirds. Okay. I can multiply 16 by over 2 thirds. This fraction I can multiply by anything as long as it's the same, right? If I multiply by 5 over 5, that's fine because what's 5 over 5 equal to? 1. So I'm going to choose to multiply by 3 halves over 3 halves. In the denominator, 3 halves times 2 thirds is? What is 2 thirds times 3 halves? 1. 1. So whatever we get here, we're dividing it by 1, which we might as well just say whatever is in the numerator because you divide it by one, it's just itself. Okay. To multiply 16 by three halves, we'll put 16 over one, multiply by three halves. So there you have 16 times the reciprocal of the denominator, 16 times three halves. 
you get 24. 24 over 1 is 24. So you can't just take the reciprocal of either one. If you take the reciprocal of the, of, of the numerator, you're going to get actually the reciprocal of the correct answer. Again, it's about creating good habits, practicing good habits, establishing good habits. Let's show what we are doing to both sides so that we wind up with a 1 times x. There are other ways to get to the right answer. Those ways are clunky and difficult to apply to new situations and more difficult equations. A reminder that is the sign of us successful uh, approach to this <coughs> equation would be that we wind up with a 1 times x on the left side. So how can I do to this 5 halves x that I wind up with a 1 times x? Aiden? You divide it by 5 over 2. Divide by 5 over 2, and the same as divided by 5 over 2 is doing what? I just, I just like that. I mean, I, it's straightforward. I don't have to do the step of how do I divide by a fraction. Pretty clean. Right. So I'll multiply this side by two fifths as well, which means that I'll write that over one to help me visualize this. Okay. And 80 and 5 have a factor in common. 80 and 5 have a 5 in common. And so that gives us what? 80 divided by 5? 16 <laughs> times 2, 32. 1 times x is 32, so we know that. Well, x must be 32, because if you multiply by 1, it doesn't make any difference. All right, so now let's, uh, let's jump up to, uh, this is a one-step equation where we multiply or divide on both sides. So let's put it all together into a two-step equation, like 3x minus 5 equals uh, 30. <coughs> So now what we want to wind up getting is like a 1x plus nothing to have that going on. How do we get that? Somebody besides A and Clint? Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, 5 minus on each side. Oh, 5 plus on each So add 5. Yeah. Add 5. Mm. So negative 5 plus 5 is 0, so we have 3x. And I won't write the plus zero. Right? It's just three x now. Now, how do we turn that three x into a one x? Divide by three, both sides, and so x is twelve. X is twelve. Two-step equation. Let's get rid of that little piece there. Okay. Let me show you what some might try want to. What you don't want to do here, not that you can't, it's just not as easy as you think it is. You don't want to divide by 3. Okay? Because first of all, what I've written right here is not how I would divide by 3. Right? If I had two sides of a scale over here, and I want to divide by 3, this side would look like 3. Three of those canisters, right? Minus five, They're like plus negative five, right? So let's say I have five of those, but they're all negative. Like they're gonna almost float and pull the tray up rather than weighing it down. If I want to divide this by three, if I want to see one third of this, then just looking at one third of this is not enough. I'd have to look at one third of this as well. And then that becomes a real hassle because then I have to look at negative five thirds and try and 
finagle that. We don't want to mess with that. To make it easier, let's not divide by 5 or 3 first. Let's add 5 first. Let's get rid of the, the little extras. Right? Get those out of there. Then we'll do the dividing and the multiplying. Okay? If you think about it, it's just the opposite of the order of operations. First, you would, if you had the number x, you would multiply by 3 and then subtract 5. Want to get x by itself? Let's add 5 first and then divide by 3 next. Let's reverse the order of operations. Okay. Hey, Mr. Stewart, yeah. can you add 5 first? That's what we did on the couple of pages before that. That's what we did. Oh, add 5 yeah. first, yeah. divide 3. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, sorry. No problem. stuff in there, but if we think, what I would like to do is just slowly do whatever I can to get x by itself, and just do one thing at a time, and you'll be fine. If you're not sure what to do first, just do anything that you're sure is correct, okay, and then see what the next step looks like, and then approach that step in the same way. What can I do that I know would be correct? I'm not just guessing and taking a stab in the dark. Right? If you feel like you're taking a stab in the dark, you're not sure if what you're doing is correct, just hold off a second. And just do it, we'll do it together. Okay? To make good habits to start with. Right. So and Kyler's gonna show us what he tried. What did you try? I so I took two times one. Uh-huh. I got two, and then two times negative five x and got negative ten x. So what did Kyler just do? Distributed the two. Can you distribute the two into the parentheses? Yeah. No. Absolutely, we can. <laughs> oh, plus four. And then, so then I, I have minus four, and minus four on the eight side. Four. So you gotta do the same thing on both sides. And I got negative twelve. Okay. Two minus ten x equals negative twelve. All right. And, and I think I messed up this part right here. I, I did. Plus two to the plus two to the twelve. I don't know if I did that right. Well, what's this here? A two. What's two plus two? Four. Do we want four? One. No. Okay. We're real close. We don't want four, right? What do, what do we want this to be? Minus two. We'd like it to be zero, so we would need to subtract two. Subtract two from two, you get zero. Subtract two from both sides. Now we're at negative ten x equals negative 14. Aiden? It's negative divided by negative is a positive. And if you remember dividing by 10, you can just move the decimal place to the left. Plus. Okay, 1.4. Good. When we look at it from the beginning, it looks like a mess. It, what do we do? <coughs> We do anything we're sure is correct. Distributing, that's correct. Okay. Subtracting four from both sides, four minus four is zero. So we could do that, and it is helpful. Subtracting two from both sides, that's a good idea, because then we just wind up with negative ten x because two minus two is zero. Okay. The very last thing, divide by negative ten, because you want a one times x. Negative ten divided by negative ten is one x. Okay. Everything you you see over here just. Try and move away, get rid of all that extra stuff, you leave x by itself, and there you'll be at the very end. I've been taking one little step at a time. Richard? Could you do 2 plus 4 and then you get that? It depends. Can I do this 2 plus this 4? Or this 2 plus this 4? After distributing? Yeah. Yes, after, after distributing, yes. 2 plus 4 is 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. Subtracting 4 and subtracting 2 later is the same as subtracting 6, right? So yeah, you could add, add those together and hit 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. 
and we'll wind up in the same place at negative 10 x equals negative 14 equals x equals 24 there as well. Also, you don't have to distribute at all if you don't want to. We just uh, get rid of this. We could uh, subtract 4 from the very beginning. Subtract 4 and have 2 times. Stop zipping up, please. We have so many minutes left. Whoever's zipping, stop zipping. Grace, stop arguing. All right, my fault. Write a piece of paper. All right, we subtract 4 on both sides. Certainly that's true. That's correct. What can we do now? Is that hard to find in the section 1.1 exercises? You just go to the bottom of each page, bottom corner of each page. That's in our book. Yeah. Yeah. You can get your book online. So we have two times this thing equals negative 12. What could we do, Molly? Um, the, are we trying not to use the distributive Right. What oh. if we don't distribute? I have no idea. I know. I know. Oh, two Think about it. this is the same as saying two times, let's call it M, so we use a different letter. But if two times something I don't know equals negative 12, did you divide by 2 on both sides? Yes. Yeah, you could do that. Of course you could do that. It's the same thing here. It's 2 times something I don't know equals negative 12. We divide by 2 on both sides. We just have half of this is one of those things. It was 2. We divided in half. Now we just have one of them. 6, subtract 1, negative 5x equals negative 7, divide by negative 5. We've seen at least four different approaches here. Is any one of them more correct than the other? No, because I want to know what to say. give us 1.4. Why was the first one easiest for Kyler? The one that Kyler did. OK. I like this. I like just avoiding distribution altogether. Why distribute it and then divide by 2 later? Well, up to you. It doesn't matter how you do it. Okay? As long as you're not guessing and checking, that's the one thing we don't want to do. Uh, as long as you're making, like each step you make is mathematically correct, then do it that way. Do it the way that makes sense to you. Distribute, don't distribute. Combine and get six. Don't combine and get six. Just do it in a way that's correct each step of the way. That's the important part, okay? Uh, so, could use the last few minutes here to get some problems done if you have books on you. If you don't, it's okay. You can look on what somebody else can like. There might be one at the bottom of your desk and somebody else left it here. Yep. Um, but we have a few minutes left.